we'd like to welcome you all to this Sunday of the last, the last Sunday of August. Um, if you are not seated yet, either in the chair or in your car, we ask that you get yourself settled. We do want to especially remember this day, those who have lost homes, family members, um, faith on both ends of our country, um, those who have been so deeply affected by the hurricanes, and also um, folks in, out in California um, that have lost everything in their homes, and some of them even their lives. So let us especially remember those and um, the people in our own lives, maybe those we know or those that we only have heard about that continue to be so deeply affected by this pandemic. Let us spend a few seconds in silence and then Lauren will be Thanks to Bill Fitz for taking down the umbrella that was swinging wildly. And so we begin. Blessed be God, source of all being, eternal word, and Holy Spirit. Let 
let us say together the hymn to the Holy Spirit. Come, bright spirit of Jesus, with gracious light pour on us your perfect love. You who protect the innocent, the poor in spirit and in body, bless all who need your presence. Come to shine within each one gathered that with comfort and welcome you will be the guest around this table. Spirit of peace, be our aid as we labor for goodness, as we shed tears for those in pain and grief. Brightness of God, fill our hearts with your bounty to make us ever yours, for we are nothing without you. Amen. God be with you. Let us pray together the collect for this day. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. lesson today is from the Hebrew scripture, Jeremiah chapter 15. O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me, and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of Mary, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand, I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wounding terrible, my music to feel? Clearly, you are to me like a deceitful book, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is They who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Oh, 
second lesson is from Romans chapter 12. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. you are able, please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then 
he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the gospel. Praise to Christ the word. Please be seated. Do you have a favorite scripture? Maybe from the Psalms or maybe from one of the Gospels? I might venture to suggest that the readings from Jeremiah and Matthew may not have made it into your favorite category. Jeremiah, rightly termed God's weeping prophet, is at it again. Lament, accusation, bitter anguish, solitary. He is complaining to God, and God is gently rebuking him. I think sometimes we might all have felt like that. Prayer sometimes gets no response, but maybe it gets a rebuke. But to pray is often to lament. Jeremiah's suffering is often ours. It's personal, it's spiritual, and it's social. We all have personal stuff in our lives that we often bring to prayer. It's just that simple. Our lives are open before God, and we need to express those, those lives in words, in feelings, and sometimes in tears. Our spiritual lives may seem dull, and maybe even virtually absent at, of any kind of meaning at this moment in time. We are physically and spiritually distancing from each other and often feel like that with God. Day after day is often much the same. Nothing much changes. And excuse me, this blasted COVID-19 is not going away. Which leads to feeling very isolated and not being in communion with each other, except maybe on Zoom or maybe once in a while a conversation in person such as what we have here on Sunday mornings. In the midst of Jeremiah's lament, God gives a word of both repentance and assurance. What God says to Jeremiah, God says to tell him to say this to my people. Return to me, turn back, stand before me. You are precious means for us not to give up on our prayer life, no matter how long this pandemic may last, or how difficult it is to get through yet another boring same as yesterday day. One thing about Jesus is his days seem to never be quite the same as the one before. Do you remember last week? He was praising Peter. This week, he's calling him evil. Last week, Peter is a rock. This week, he's Satan. Last week, it's about being Messiah, and this week, it's about being not only Messiah, but a cross. And Peter is having a really tough time with this understanding about this Messiah. He's probably muttering under his breath, what kind of a Messiah are you anyway? What is this about a cross? Aren't you going to save Israel from the Romans? And Jesus says, Peter, you have it all wrong. This Messiah is going to the cross, and you better be ready yourself because yours is coming. It's about being obedient to death, which is not what Peter wants to hear. Jesus does not want some part-time, good times only disciple who can only long for the good and the self-aggrandizing and the important place. Jesus wants Peter and you and I to be ready for a cross. As much as there are preachers who talk about a prosperity gospel, Jesus is not one of them and warns against it. God does not assure of happiness but does assure us that we will never be alone. No matter what, or who, or where, or how, 
In Jesus' words, if we gain the world, what's the profit? The answer is, there isn't one. We each are to follow the path of obedience no matter where that may lead us. In 1992, on a patio outside my home on the island of Oahu in Hawaii, I was reading Psalm 26, our psalm for today, verses 6 and 7. I, may, I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession round your altar, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. I had been praying for some time for God's leading in my life, and this, these verses were it. These verses were my call to the priesthood. Jeremiah had his calling. Jesus had his. Peter his. So the question before each of us this day, where is God leading you and I this season? And what cross is Jesus asking us to bear? And maybe, just maybe, Jeremiah will become a favorite. Amen. As you are able, please stand for our affirmation of faith. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might have come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. prayers of the people. Please respond with the bold text. Caring God, we thank you for your gifts in creation, for our world, for our land, its beauty, and its resources. We pray for those who make decisions about the resources of the earth. Those who work on the land and sea, in city and in industry. For artists, scientists, and visionaries. For all who through their own or others' actions are deprived of fullness of life. Williams, Donald Graham, June Thomas, Leon Nivet, Regina Verwill, Michelle McGowan, Aurora Dennison, Lori Rutherford, Joyce Hawkins, Roseanne Royal, Megan Bonnell, Mark Drunkenbrod, Kathy Lewis, and Rachel Sharp. Let's also remember to pray daily for our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, our bishops, Marianne Edgar Buddy and Chilton Knudsen, and our priest, Linda Crockett. For those in politics, medical science, and relief work, and for your church, we thank you for your call to celebrate your creation. 
We thank you for revealing your redeeming love. God, Creator, bring us new life. Today we also want to pray for those who are affected by the fires and Hurricane Laura. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains be toppled into the depths of the sea, though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble at its tunnel. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our strong. vast as the distance from one end of creation to another, God's love for us is even greater. As far as east is from west, does God remove our sin from us? Thanks be to God. The peace of God be with you all. Please greet with each other with the peace of Christ as you are able. Please be seated. We come to the table of God. Blessed are you, God of all creation. In the beginning, your spirit hovered over the earth, calling into being every creature that exists. Earth itself responded to your love, and to every creature that came to be, you said, yes, you are good. The waters brought forth life, into clay you breathed a living soul. 
From that day, humanity has sung your praise. There is nothing that is not drawn to you, for the glory of your presence is written on all that is. You are reflected in high mountains and lowly valleys. You are there in the deep oceans and the farthest stars and in the stirrings of our hearts. We blend our voices with the prayers of all creation as we sing your praise with words that shall never cease. Holy, 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 God of mercy, giver of life, earth and sea and sky and all that lives declare your presence and your glory. We thank you, our God, especially for Jesus. In the fullness of time, you sent him in your name to draw us ever closer to you. He emptied himself and became as all humanity is, humbler yet, even, except, even to accepting death, death on a cross. You raised him on high, setting him above all creation, so that every tongue should acclaim, Jesus Christ is Lord. It was for all you did this, filled with the fullness of your love. In the spirit and example of Jesus, we are gathered here to celebrate this meal, to become a living sign of your presence in our world. We recall that he took bread and thanked you for your constant love. He broke the bread and gave it to his friend saying, Take this and share it among you. This is my body given for you. He also took the cup of wine. Again, he gave you praise and shared it with those who were with him, saying, Take and drink from it, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, shed for people everywhere. Whenever you do this, do it in memory of me. With great joy, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. God of all creation, send your spirit upon this bread, upon this wine, that they may be the body and blood of your Christ. Bless us, therefore, by your Holy Spirit, that as we all receive this consecrated bread, we offer you our faith and our praise. We may be united with Christ and with one another, and we may continue faithful in all things. Please remove your consecrated wafer from their beds. body of Christ broken for you. Together, send your spirit upon us so that we who eat this bread may become one people nourished by your love. We pray that by the same spirit we may know that all people are our brothers and our sisters, so that wherever we are, peace and justice may be the signs of your presence among us. Amen. As Christ teaches, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, 
and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so we pray together our ending prayer. Most loving God, we offer our praise for your hand in all creation. We are restored to your goodness throughout eternity and renewed in your love. May we be imitators of your holiness and goodness, even as we have received this blessed bread and wine. Redeem the world as we seek to stand with you in the power of your spirit. We ask this in the name of Jesus, your Christ, our brother and your servant. Amen. May Christ's holy, healing, and enabling spirit be with you every step of the way and be your guide as your life changes and turns. Blessed be God, the source of all being, the eternal word, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before you all prepare to leave, a few things to help us out. Please do not take your chairs to the ship. They will be picked up. Just please leave them where they are. But please take everything else that you have with you. Also, just to let you all know that Bishop Marianne Buddy will be with us on the 20th of September. Prayer, as I hope you are praying, is that it will not rain, as it has in recent past memory. We've had two bishops and it poured. However, the last time Bishop Marion was with us, thus it was a beautiful day. So may that continue. Please, um, as much as you are able, plan to come that day. If you have other friends, or parishioners, people that you think would like to be part of this service when she is here on the 20th, please invite them. Just make sure you let Nancy Rao and Ann Fitz know so that they may plan accordingly. But please do plan on coming on the 20th of September if it is raining. I think we can all be angry with God that day. <laughs> Thank you all for your presence here. God's blessings be with you. Please be safe. Get home. Thank you.